Hey everyone, back again with another one of my infamously long explanation tutorial demo videos. I like to do them this way because it uh, lets you see what the asset is all about, but also shows you how to use it. Kind of kills two birds with one stone. I like to think that this asset is pretty self explanatory. It's got a lot of built in warning messages uh, and explanation for what's going on. So if you ever have something that's not set up properly, this will. This will let you know, and then you can it can get you back on track. All the uh, all the variables have good tool tips, so you can see what they're doing as well, and how they should be set. <clears throat> this is uh, this is called Umber Audio Army Knife. Hopefully, you caught on that this is a play on Swiss Army Knife. It's a multi-purpose audio tool that does a lot of things. It's not specialized in any way. It's not a not a heavy hitter, but what it does do is do a lot of things quickly. It's good for prototyping, smaller projects where you don't need such a, a heavy hitter in the project. <clears throat> things like that. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a little bit of a little bit of a cold here, so I'm gonna try to keep my clearing my throat to a minimum. So, like always, there's a general folder. It's got some attributes and things like that that I use across multiple multiple assets. And then this Umbra Audio Army Knife folder is going to be the folder that will have the meat and potatoes. The editor script that makes this magic happen, the actual script itself, which is kind of nice. I got this all boiled down into one, one script. <clears throat> and then a, uh, a scriptable object here that you'll see in a second, but it controls audio source settings. These are some defaults. Please don't delete them or rename them, otherwise part of the asset won't work. Speaking of which, let's dive into that asset. So when you add the Umbra Audio Army Knife to uh, to an object, you'll notice that an audio source gets created, obviously. If you're going to be playing some audio, we'll, we'll need that. There's a little drop-down menu here. You can pick some presets that, uh, that I've shown in the default folder. You are allowed to change these values if you want. So for example, if I go to Ambient and just bring down the Spatial Blend to, uh, to zero so it's all 2D, You'll notice that this gets updated, and uh, that slider moves down to 2D. It's really handy if you have a lot of a lot of uh, <clears throat> audio sources that you want set up similarly. Then we can just go in here, set that back up to 0.75, and they're all going to update for you. You can do that with all the settings on the audio source. The only thing it doesn't handle is the the curve here. Uh, let's get rid of these puppies. Besides using the presets, uh, messing with them here, you can also use a custom audio knife settings. You just go to assets, create Umber Evolution, Umber Audio Army Knife, Audio Knife Settings, name it whatever you want, and then you can you can set the settings up however you need in your for that particular. Uh, category of audio. Then drag and drop this here, and it'll uh, it'll transpose your settings. Oh, kind of handy, uh, just for that that alone to manage a lot of audio sources, so you don't have to set them all up, go through them one by one. But if you do want to override that, you can just check this box here, and then you can set up the settings however you want. Volume modifier is just, like it says, a multiplier that goes under your volume. Because a lot of times you'll have sound effects that you want to have the audio source set up the same, but you'll want to change the volume a little bit to balance the audio. And this just lets you do that without having to create a new scriptable object for every single um, time you want to but rebalance the volume. Play and loop automatically, like it says. Uh, this will just keep on calling play on itself and it'll go indefinitely. Play random choice just changes this to a from a single clip like this. Give it a little play here. This is a clip to a random selection. Now they are weighted, so if we play right now, they should be pretty 
pretty random. It should go to each one roughly the same, the same amount. Apples. Apples. Grapefruit. Grapefruit. Apples. Grapefruit. Bananas. Bananas. Oranges. So you see it likes its apples and grapefruit quite a bit. But it is random. It's just using a random number generator. But if we set this to 100, it should be roughly 100 times more likely to say apples. So that's basically all we should get. Apples. 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 Pretty straightforward. We can fade fade clips in and out, and you can set a time for them, how long it takes to fade in, and how far before the end of the clip that it'll start fading out. So if we just watch this volume here when I hit play, this is a clip. It takes roughly a second to fade in, and a second before the clip ends it fades back out. It's a short clip, so it's uh, going up and down relatively quickly. Um, you can use a looping clip structure. So for those of you who may be new or hobbyists that don't know, a pretty standard industry practice is to have a clip that starts off a loop, so something like a fireball uh, flaring up into existence. Then you'll have a loop, like some crackling. And then when the fireball explodes, there'll be an end. So it'll make that explosion sound or a whooshing sound. And the reason you do this is because you never know how long that fireball is going to be alive for. And it would sound weird if it just had that crackling loop in there. So you want something that starts it, blends nicely into the loop, and then something that stops it and ends off the loop nicely. So if we play this here, start. it should say start, like it did. Loop, 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 loop. It's a loop, loop for 10 seconds. Loop, 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 loop. Loop. Stop. And stop. You can also loop it indefinitely, and then stop will have to be called <coughs> before it'll, uh, sorry, before it'll stop. Start. Loop. 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 Stop. So then stop is called, and it plays the exit clip, and, uh, and stops looping. Again, you can use the same settings you could before. You can get a list of, of these looping structures to, to call from, just like you can with a regular clip. It can call itself automatically, all of that stuff. Now, there is one special, uh, well, a couple special things here. So if you're playing sound effects, I've taken out... Um, the play automatically options on these two. And if you're using triggered, there's a lot of options here that you can go into, but you can play when you enter a trigger, you can play when you exit a trigger, you can use tags <clears throat> to limit what can and cannot trigger this. You can say when it stops, you can set if it only plays once or if it'll play multiple times if they keep on entering the trigger. You can set a delay, so if they're walking down a hallway and you want some spooky music to start, it can start after, let's say, 10 seconds after they've entered the trigger. Stuff like that. And other than that, all the, uh, all the settings are the same. You can use looping clips. Uh, you cannot use looping clips. You can play it automatically. Um, but what this is going to do is it will only start playing automatically after they've enter the trigger it will continue to to loop um, indefinitely after the trigger's been entered or until until stop is called that's really a, a basic overview of what's going on here if you have any more questions you can always shoot me an email or use the uh, the contact form here if you go over to the if you're on YouTube you can go over to the asset store page I have a link in the description, or the doobly-doo as some would say, and then that'll take you to the asset page, and from there there's links to uh, my email or the contact form on, for my website, or just the website itself if you want to browse other things. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, make sure to pass them over that way, or 
leave a comment on uh, on this asset if you've enjoyed it or if you have any suggestions for things you want to see just let me know all right hope you're having an awesome day and uh, I'll see you next time